Hey everyone, I just wanted to share a video with my homemade boiler system that I made. It's a waste oil slash wood boiler. It's made from a 150 gallon uh, furnace oil tank that uh, I've converted to a stove. It's lined with uh, know, about a hundred of these uh, railway track plies or track plates that are um, quite thick steel. They're about 8 by 11 inches, these plates. And it's double lined on all the walls in there. So when all those plates heat up, it holds a lot of heat. In the top door here, when I remove that, I have 27 passes of uh, copper tubing all built into a grid. Like so There's a lot of elbows and a lot of street fittings. But uh, there's three rows of nine. Actually, there's 27 passes, so forward and back. So there's in, out, in, out. So you get the idea. In the back, you can see where the pipes come in. That's the input side, far side's the output. Right now my in return water back to my stove is returning at about 115 degrees and it's outputting at 180 degrees. The oil is off right now, it's just running strictly on firewood right now. But I do run both. Today is very cold out, it's minus 25 degrees Celsius. So I'll put a couple of pieces of wood in there and run the oil burner at the same time. Uh, to feed oil, just basically have this 20 liter stainless steel pot, uh, runs down, there's a shutoff valve there, runs through a piece of fuel line, runs through a copper coil that sits on top of the intake nozzle, that is the air intake and the oil intake. So that heats up the oil, goes through this uh, needle valve, here basically on this thing I only run it about a quarter of a turn, that's like, that's considered high, that's about considered low, that's off. Very little oil goes in this thing. It burns about a liter per hour. It's fed by an air system, obviously, because this actually has a waste oil furnace injector nozzle, and it's a one millimeter injector nozzle. Um, the air is supplied by this linear compressor, which produces 15 psi at about three CFMs. Um, so it's continuous flow compressor. It's very quiet. Can run continuously forever. It doesn't hurt it. The bottom is the air intake that's adjustable. Right now I have a restrictor in there that restricts the airflow. And below that is the ash clean out port. So I clean the, the wood ash out of it. And that pipe input there is like a four inch pipe that goes run, run through the back. And has several half inch holes drilled in it strategically to allow air for the wood burning. Generally I can just plug that right off when it's running on oil. In the front here, that's the burner plate or the injector plate. I just welded a tube in there. There's a couple pieces of copper fittings in there like that are shielded with some uh, just some steel tubing. The upper one is the oil intake, the lower is the air. Um, they go to an injector nozzle. I can also adjust my flame front by simply sliding this nozzle in and out. There's a little bit of that crud in there right now. I have to clean it out. But, uh, and I can remove the plate, the injector nozzle completely, just two wing nuts, and the whole assembly comes out for cleaning. Very simple, very cheap. This whole thing with the oil injector nozzle. The injector, I think I paid $18 for it. Scrap copper, a bunch of fittings, so I may have, I don't know, maybe $40 to make this entire injector system. And I stole the pot from my wife in the kitchen, so she still doesn't know. This, uh, the stove, like I said, is built from a 150 gallon tank. I welded in a square frame just out of angle iron and I had this uh, wood stove door, which I have another one on my original wood stove. It's the same door, it's a Kodiak 1700. I got the door for free because the nickel is peeling on one corner. I removed the ceramic glass and put in this steel plate so therefore I can mount my uh, oil burner nozzle. I also have a feeder that I made for this thing. If you follow me over here, this feeder assembly here, which also plugs into the front of that door, that thing there feeds wood pellets or sawdust into the stove continuously. So I basically have four options. I can run this thing on firewood, I can run it on waste oil, I can run it on wood pellets, or I can run it on uh, sawdust. Anything will go into the stove and it all burns very well and very clean. 
Uh, I've been running this thing for about three years. This is the third season, fourth season now that I've been running the stove. This thing heats my house 100% from used motor oil that I get for free. Uh, I go and pick it up places. They just kill me, you know, when their barrel's full. I just go swap out barrels. Other places I have a 1,000 liter tote that I can fill up. So once the oil is full in these locations, I'll go pick it up and bring it home. Um, the only filtration I do is I keep it warm inside because you have to heat the oil in order for it to burn atomized properly, I guess. Um, I just pump it into a jug, as you can see there. Dump, pump it into a jug and then dump it through my paint strainer and my filter. Five liters at a time. Fill up the pot. It just... It's a little bit warm there. If I need to heat it up quickly, I can sit it on this plate on top of the stove. That'll warm it up a lot faster, but generally I don't have to. Um, but like you get the gist. The oil drops in, goes into this injector nozzle. Here, I'll fire it up now. Basically have my compressor on a switch. Okay, turn the compressor on. Pump an air. And I go to the front. I turn on the oil. Now, if wood is going, and it will ignite it, it's trying to go. I just give it a click with the torch, just like that, light it. And now she's burning used motor oil. The oil, it has to be thinned. I do run a little bit of gasoline in it, just to thin it down. But I also get 205 liters of waste gas from a small engine shop. So it's old, rotten gas. Just basically use to thin out the oil if it's too thick. But generally, their oil isn't too thick. So right now, that thing is blowing in the flame front that just shoots inside the stove, as you can see. It creates a hell of a flame. And that thing produces a ton of heat. This thing on for a couple of minutes. The stove temperature will get up to around 700 is where I run it and that will produce about 195 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit water temperature. And from there the lines go up along the roof and out through the wall and goes out into my boiler shed out back. And I'll take you there in a second. So as you see here those are my boiler lines coming out of the shed in and out, so my solar panels on top. They go into my little boiler shed that I have here. It's just basically a storage tank for um, holding the hot water. I had a 400 gallon tank in there, but realized I didn't need that. I now run in here. My old gas hot water tank is now my storage tank. So there we go. There's the hot line coming in insulated goes into the hot water tank water's circulated there the line comes back out of the hot water tank goes to my circulation pump and runs back into the building now everything is run off my batteries inverter and solar panels so if the power goes out the heating system stays running I'm never without heat from the top of the tank as you can see it's outputting right now at 100 and 55 degrees outputting to the house goes through the lines bilge tank in the system goes here autofill valve for the water goes through a second flow pump which then goes into my pex lines which then runs a hundred yeah a hundred feet into my house where it then goes through a 20 plate heat exchanger that heats my boiler system and my house eventually and then that angled line returns back in to the system. Now the genius of this is the warm water returning will go straight back into the boiler or the excess will go into the hot water tank or vice versa. So the hot water tank is always heated but the water is always circulated in coming and out going. There's an overpressure valve that will blow off if it needs to that goes to a dump outside and then the drain valve in the bottom is also tied into that so if I need to drain the system simply goes out that drain valve. So yeah, that's the whole system. That light tells me that the boiler is on in the house right now so that the pump is cycling. This pump just always runs, as does the one on the wall over here. 
they run 24 7 never stop this one is the crucial one i can't let this pump stop as long as the boiler's hot so that's why this one is tied into my solar and backup system if the power goes out this pump stays running uninterrupted so that never overheats the water in the system i'll take you into the house now and show you where the water ties into my existing home natural gas boiler as you can see that's my boiler shed over there boilers running raw water lines run under the ground under here go through this box and into my house here we are now in my 3700 square foot house it's two stories above plus a full basement this is my existing um, gas boiler that I had but I got rid of natural gas because here in Canada we get absolutely screwed with carbon taxes and everything else it's not worth using electricity anymore I even converted my hot water tank from the gas hot water tank outside to an electric one which my solar system will run in the summertime in the winter time we don't get enough sunshine to do much so but anyways so this whole system is an existing gas boiler it's a circulation pump everything's in line but the only thing i added to it was this 20 plate heat exchanger which is capable of transferring i believe it was about 420,000 btus per hour of water temperature to so you have your hot water coming in so this is incoming temperature from, from outside it's coming in at 150 degrees fahrenheit in this line it's very hot goes through the plate exchanger the return line from the house is here goes through the plate exchanger the hot water comes in here very hot can't touch that and then the uh, return line goes back out back into my shop so there's the two lines and there it runs back out the wall and through my yard as i showed when we came in the house boiler is completely untouched. The waters do not mix because of the plate exchanger. So this water stays within itself and the outside water stays within itself. I don't run any antifreeze or anything in the system because it runs 24 seven. I'm not worried about it ever freezing up. This pump switches off and on as it needs to, as the zones open up for each section of the house, heating everything individually. I also converted my gas boiler to electric by installing a 3000 watt electric heater in the return line into the boiler on the bottom. It's just simply a T fitting and the 3000 watt element threads right into it. So the uh, heater is able to heat the electric boiler off electricity, uh, either from my solar system or from the grid. Uh, this is my solar power coming in from my outside. That's the remote controller for the inverter that I have outside. This is a secondary panel that I ran into the house, you know, extra plugs and stuff. But that is my solar power. It's a one gauge cable that runs in from the boiler slash solar shed out there. So there you go. This is how I heat my entire home. Um, off grid, basically, well, completely, because I don't rely on any power unless I need electricity, which I rarely use. Um, I burn wood. I burn waste oil, I can burn anything that burns basically. Paper, boxes, wood chips, sawdust, I can put anything into that stove and it makes hot water which is then pumped into the house which then heats up my existing boiler system and then heats all four floors of my home. So the basement, main floor and then my upper floor is in two separate zones. And there you have it. This is how I heat my home for dirt cheap uh, here in Canada because it gets super cold. And this system has saved me loads of money. It doesn't cost me anything really for the fuels. You know, some of my time obviously to go get firewood, which can be a pain. So I prefer to burn used oil because it's much easier. Um, a 205 liter drum of used oil will burn for basically two weeks continuously in my system and that will keep my house toasty warm and uh, eventually I have a plan to tie this in there because there is an extra line that comes off this and I'm going to tie my hot water tank into it but honestly I don't need it because the electricity that this thing uses is very little compared to what it was with gas but 
if I want to, I could, but in the summertime, my hot water tank runs off solar anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But, uh, so there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And uh, if you have any questions about how the system is built or any particular components, just let me know and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you very much.